There we go. The recording has been started. So once again, hello and welcome everyone to week four of TEM. And this is our last of four online sessions that we will have throughout the month. How's everybody doing this evening? Hopefully many of you are doing well, if not all of you. A couple of grades. That's good. Good. Great. Great. Doing good. Okay. That's fine. Fair enough. All right. Good. So like I said, week four. Uh, congratulations, everyone. You've pretty much made it. Did it go by fast for all of you? Yeah, when you're a full sale student, time flies. Ten, time, ton, ha, can't, I'm, apparently I'm tongue tied. Time tends to fly very quickly when you're a full sale student. So, once again, welcome to week four, everyone. My name is Chad Pusick. Uh, glad that you are here this evening. I think we're going to get started. Um, I'm sure that many of you are going to have some questions. There's a couple that I'm going to anticipate right off the bat. However, I will say hold on to your questions because I have a feeling I'm going to have them answered, uh, especially as we go through the video project that is due. This, especially as we go through the video project that is due this week. So, how did week three go for everyone? Every week three go well for all of you. Hopefully, it went well. The networking plan and the mission statement. Some of you had, at least from my section, some of you had very good ideas for your networking plan, um, as well as your mission statement. So I'm glad to see so many of you did it, turned it in, did a good job on it. So kind of going back through the weeks, what we've done so far, week one, we had the plan of attack and the industry websites, uh, just kind of planning your month and uh, thinking about uh, all the uh, different websites that are in your industry. Week two was definitely about your industries. That was the industry growth project, anticipating where you think your industry is going to be going in the next 5, 10, 20 years and what your place is going to be in that. And then the industry terms project, which was connecting you with terms in your industry, as well as a couple of other connected industries as well. Week three, like I said, was your networking plan and your mission statement. I won't go over that too much since you guys just all did that. And this week is going to be your professional spotlight and your reflection video. These are your last two projects for TEM. Once again, I know it went by very fast. Uh, if you didn't have any problems in weeks one through three, I'm sure you'd be perfectly fine in week four. So the projects for this week. And the first one we're going to talk about is your reflection video. Uh, this one is pretty simple, pretty straightforward. We want you to kind of discuss uh, what you learned, your industry, where your place is at, how you're going to use the information that you learned in our class, in your future classes. Can you apply it to your career? What would you tell future students coming into TEM? What would you tell them about the class to kind of know ahead of time? So getting right into it, the requirements for this project. Uh, Yep, I know. I saw. I see one person right now say making videos scares me. Uh, don't let it scare you. Once again, I'm going to cover everything here. Uh, many, I'm sure many of you have a question of, do I have to be on camera? Hold on to that question. I'm, I'm willing to admit that many of you have that one, but hold on to that. I promise you, I will. Uh, I'll be getting to that in just a second. So the things that you want to discuss in your video. Uh, first things we want you to talk about is. What did you learn in the class this month? What did you learn in the class? And what did you learn about your industry and maybe the connected industries as well? So we would like you to discuss that. Next question we want you to discuss is what did you learn in the future? Or what did you learn about your future, your own future? Where is your industry going? What is your place into it, uh, place in that future? Next thing we want you to discuss uh, going forward, how will you apply the skills that you've gained in our class to future classes and possibly your work environment as well? Uh, and then lastly, talk about the advice that you would give to future TEM students coming into the class. What should they learn? What should they prepare for? Uh, time management, networking with your peers. I saw a lot of networking going on in my sections. Uh, that pleases me immensely. Uh, I had some students that were putting up their contact information in the discussion boards and whatnot. So I'm very glad to see the number of you that actually reached out to do some uh, networking in an online environment. So those are the four things that we want you to discuss in your video. 
Now the question is, how do we actually create this video? So, thank you, Zachary. Zachary says y'all are beautiful. For those that can't see the uh, the tax box, uh, so your minimum requirements: create the video in your program of choice. So you can use whatever video creation platform you want to use. Uh, the output of that video should be like an MP4, AVI, or .mov. I would recommend like an MP4 and an M or an MOV file. Uh, yes, you can use PowerPoint to create this video. That is not a problem. Now this is considered a discussion board post. So you will need to have your video done on Thursday and uploaded. And then of course you have to make four responses to those videos, to your peers' videos by Sunday. Now, you can kind of go nuts with this project as much as you want. Uh, be creative with it. Have a little fun with it. But there are some things that I do want you to know when you are creating the video. You will want to keep it short and sweet. Now, the minimum requirement is at least a minute and a half. And honestly, um, a minute and a half is not terribly hard to hit. Uh, so you want to, if you uh, address all four of these questions, you should have at least a minute and a half. However, try, try not to go over like five minutes or so. You start getting past five minutes and start getting starts getting a little long, a little long. Uh, on the week, of course, shows the initial post is due on the fourth. Uh, what day is the fourth? Is that Friday? Sunday. Hmm. I'm going to change that. Uh, it should be due on Thursday. I'll have to look, take a look at that in my sections at least. Yeah, this one is due. Uh, this one is due Thursday. However, it doesn't get changed. It will be Sunday. So let me reach out to the other instructors. So for your initial post, when you're making it, uh, you've got a couple options. One of those options is you could upload the video to YouTube and then provide the link to the YouTube uh, page itself. If you decide to go that route, which is perfectly fine. If you decide to go that route, just make sure that your video is either set as public or unlisted. Uh, if it's set to private, we will not be able to see it. The other option is you can uh, upload the video directly to the discussion board. Uh, that is perfectly fine. Uh, that's the method I actually recommend to do. Either way is fine. You won't lose any points if you decide to use YouTube or another video editing or another video hosting site. Uh, but my suggestion is to just upload it to YouTube. And make sure that you respond to at least four of your peers' videos. Uh, somebody just pointed that out, too. Uh, if it was due on Sunday, I think many of you would be uploading on Sunday and it would not give enough people time to respond to their peers. So I'm going to reach out and make sure that it should be Thursday, but assume right now that it's supposed to be Thursday. So I would try to have it done uh, no later than that. Now, for the actually capturing the video, it's up to you. Uh, the big question that I'm sure is on everybody's mind is, do I need to be on camera? And the answer to that question is no. You do not actually need to be on camera. Now, with that being said, you do need to vocally narrate your project. Uh, it must be narrated in your own voice. Uh, that, is, that is an absolute requirement for this project. But you do not need to have your face on there. Now, if you want to use something like Adobe Spark, that's perfectly fine. Uh, if you want to use a series of rotating images, that's fine as well, as long as those images relate to what you're talking about, and it's actually a series of images. Uh, you cannot just post just one image and then talk over that, because that's not really a video, that's just you talking over a still image. So you have to have some sort of video component to it. Uh, we've had pe plenty of people use Adobe Spark. 
We've had a lot of students, uh, a lot of the gamer students, actually record their game and just talk over it. Uh, I am perfectly fine with that option as well. I have zero problems with that. But it can't be just like one image that you're speaking over. With that being said, uh, I can tell you right now, the easiest way to do this project is to actually have your face on camera. I'm not going to lie there. You Most uh, computers uh, have some sort of video on that where you can record yourself or you can do it on your phone. Uh, those are two of the simplest options to do. However, if you're really paranoid about showing your face on camera because you're shy, um, that's perfectly fine. And once again, Spark is fine for this project as well, but however, you must vocally narrate that project. Yeah, some of the free ones, um, yeah, you, you're kind of limited in functionality. Uh, Honestly, I, I recommend Spark. Uh, what recording program works the best for this? Uh, that is, <laughs> uh, kind of depends on you. What do you feel comfortable with? Uh, there's a number of different recording programs out there that you can download and try. Uh, if, you're, if your PC, if you have a mic for it, you should just be able to record it, uh, WAV format. Uh, and there's any number of programs that will do it for you. I think even Spark will do it if you've got a mic for it. Yeah, Audacity, thank you. Audac uh, Audacity. Audacity is a great one to use. I've actually used Audacity before myself. So once again, you do not need to physically be on camera, so I'm sure that many of you are breathing a sigh of relief to that. I know many of you are shy, but however, like I said, the easiest way to do this is just to record yourself talking about the questions. But it's up to you guys how you want to go about doing this. Now just going over the rubric, once again, yeah, even in the rubric it says Thursday submittal, and I'm gonna check that date, but we really do wanna have it done by Thursday. You'll have it th uh, submitted by, via, oh, I cannot talk this evening. It's been a very long week for me guys, and it's only Tuesday, so you have to bear with me a little bit. Um, so if you want the exceptional, you have it submitted by th uh, Thursday. You'll have it in the FSO platform, either a link to a social media site or wherever your website is hosted, or you've uploaded the video in the correct format directly to FSO. Uh, that's the method I recommend, but either way is perfectly fine. Uh, next up. You've answered all four of the questions clearly. You've stated your thoughts, your future plans. You've used your voice. Once again, that is a requirement. You must, in some way, shape, or form, vocally narrate your project. Uh, you can add creative elements such as titles or graphics. Uh, you don't necessarily need to do that if you're recording your voice, but it does if you're recording yourself talking. Um, however, it does make for a nice touch. Um, and you've also done the minimum of four replies of at least five sentences each to your peers. So those are the exceptional categories. Uh, one thing I see quite a bit is people upload, or I'll have students that will upload just their vocals and no audio, or just their vocals and no video. Uh, I can tell you right now that if you do that, you will lose a significant portion of points. Um, video, some sort of video, is required for this project. So do not just upload you vocally speaking about the project. So once again, kind of putting this in context for you, uh, goal number one is to educate, learning to communicate in the virtual world. Um, this is something that many of you are gonna find yourselves doing in the future in your degrees. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of uh, careers now, you have the ability to work from home or at least have some control of working from home. So you kind of want to get used to being on camera. Uh, it'll help build your skills up, start thinking about your skills, and heck, you might even learn a new uh, video program. And then just a little bit of career building, getting your name out there, getting your face out there, showing it to people, just kind of building those skills up. Now, once again, this is the FAQ for the project, just another few questions that some of you might have. Uh, first and foremost, uh, yeah, that is a picture of me. So now you all get a chance to see what I look like. Uh, I, I pretty much don't look any different. The only thing now is that I have a full beard and not just a goatee. Otherwise, yep, that's me. I, I'm sure you don't care, but hey, that's fine. 
Uh, Stephanie asks, can we use music in our video as long as the music doesn't overpower our voice? Yes, you can use music. Just be careful with it. So two things, like you said, you don't want it to overpower your voice. And two, you also want to make sure you're not using anything that's really under copyright. So don't use any famous songs or anything. If you just want to have some background music, that's fine. And Michael, you're very correct. Um, you see me every week in the intro videos. That's right, my picture's up there. I totally forgot about that. Thank you for reminding me, Michael. So some of the questions that we have on this project, uh, can you use a different video editor? Once again, you can actually use any video, video editor you choose. You, and whatever one you feel comfortable with. Embedding the video into FSO, uh, if you have a copy of the student user manual, and you should, and if you don't have one, you can download it from the Full Sail website. Uh, pages 41 to 43 will show you how to upload a video. However, uh, honestly, it's really easy. In the discussion board, there's a little icon that looks like a uh, one, of the, one of the boards where they, they slam them down, they say cut. If you click on that, or it might actually look like a little film icon as well. Uh, if you click on that, that will allow you to just drag and drop your video in there. So that's why I say it's pretty easy to upload to FSO. Uh, once again, you can use just your voice as long as you have some sort of video elements to go with it. Uh, I believe the requirements are a minute and a half to like three minutes. That shouldn't be a problem. Like I said, if you go to five minutes or so, that should be okay, but you definitely do not want to go uh, past that. I, I believe the record is still 22 minutes. That is that is really long. So, yeah, please do not do 22 minutes. We do watch these. So if they were all like 22 minutes long, that would be a very long day. And do you need to respond to your classmates? Yes, this is still considered a discussion board, so you do need to respond to at least four classmates. Yeah, Josh, I'm looking into that. It should be Thursday. Uh, it, it should be Thursday. I'm going to check into that, but please assume for right now that it, it should be Thursday. I'm not sure why it's set to Sunday. But I'm going to be sending out an email to the other instructors as well, uh, pointing that out. So please try to have that completed on Thursday at the latest. Are there any questions on the 4.0 project? Small Soldiers is a great movie. I haven't seen it in a long time, though. So any questions on the 4.0 project? <coughs> Excuse me. All right, moving along then. Next up is going to be your 4.1 Professional Spotlight Project. So in this project, you want to, to kind of watch some videos from professionals that are in your industry, kind of discuss what you learned from them and what you can take away, what you're going to remember about those videos. So we do have a Google link in the project with the link to some videos you are more than welcome to find some on your own as well. So you want to pick two videos that will represent your degree program from professionals. Watch those videos and it, write at least two detailed paragraphs on what you found interesting about each video. Oh, I didn't even see the hand raise. My bad. There it is. Zach, I'm going to unmute you. Go ahead, Zach. You're you're unmuted. There you go. Go ahead. Okay. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Cool. Um, <clears throat> I just wanted to say this because I can't type. I'm basically using my phone. So um, I would recommend uh, for the video using Spark because one thing that I did was I used a YouTube downloader and I was able to put the video into Spark and Spark, when you create a video, you're actually able to, um, it has a bunch of different free, royalty-free music that you can use as an overture to your voice and whatnot. The link that I shared is actually a video I did for a creative presentation. And so you're actually able to still speak 
Um, now, granted, when you use Spark, um, it's done in slides. So every slide is about 30 seconds long. Um, so you have to basically try to make sure you fit whatever you're trying to say in that frame of 30 seconds. And if you're trying to make multiple, um, you'll have to make multiple slides to finish what you're saying or else it'll just cut you off. And I would also recommend using Firefox because using Google Chrome, it'll cut you out every single time. Oh, cool. Thank you, Zach. Uh, I didn't realize that, uh, I didn't realize that they offered intro music for you. Uh, that is awesome. So yeah, Adobe Spark, Adobe Spark is really a common program for this. Usually, at least for my classes, when I do these, um, at least a third to a half of my students typically use Adobe Spark. And it is a pretty easy and straightforward program to use for videos. So if you're unfamiliar with video editing soft software, uh, Spark is probably a very good intro to you for that. Yeah, there are so there's easy ways to um, find non copyrighted music. I also believe you can use the Full Sail library. Like if you go to, there is a virtual library for Full Sail, and I believe you can find music on there. Don't quote me on that though. So going back to the 4.1 project, uh, once again. You want to find two videos from professionals that are in your degree program and write two detailed paragraphs about those videos. And it's going to be two paragraphs for each video. So there's going to be a bit of writing involved for this one. Next up, you want to pick two more videos from one of the connected degrees. Uh, once again, the connected degrees are the programs that are go through the TEM class, such as game design, game development, game art, computer animation, cloud tech, web dev, mobile dev, software dev. I'm forgetting something. Oh, graphic design. So those are all connected programs to our class. So you want to find two videos from that. And then you want to find at least one video that is not listed on the links that we have. Uh, that can be about your industry or about a connected industry. You can use lynda.com. TED Talks is a very popular one. There's a lot of videos on YouTube that have been done by professionals, Vimeo as well. So once again, you're going to choose two videos from professionals in your degree program and write two paragraphs for each of the videos. You're going to choose two videos from professionals in a connected degree. And then you're going to choose one more video that is not on our Google list. The degree program is up to you. And you'll do the two paragraphs on that one. And this project is due on Sunday. That I know for sure. <laughs> this, one, this one is due on Sunday. And once you have it completed, you'll need to upload it to the FSO site. Obviously in PDF format with the correct naming convention. Here are some examples of what has been done in the past. You are required to do some customization on this. Uh, once again, your best bet right off the bat is adding images. That, that is always help. If you want to add a header and a, a, header and a footer, that's fine as well. Uh, however you want to do it is up to you, but you must have some sort of customization. The key is, the key is to make sure that we can read your text. Uh, Shannon, this video is being recorded, so you can always go back and look at it once it gets posted. And it should be posted up tomorrow morning at the latest. So just going over the exceptional category for your professional spotlight, if you want the most points possible, you'll have it submitted by Sunday in, F in FSO in PDF format with the correct naming convention and no spelling errors. You'll have reviewed five or more videos, two from your degree program, two from a connected degree program, and one outside of the list we provide you that can be from any degree program. And you're talking about what you learned, what inspired you, what was your takeaway, and how you will use this information. And then lastly, you've added customizations such as images, headers, and footers, and whatnot. Um, yes, this one, it is two paragraphs for each video so there is a little bit of writing with this project um, that's going to happen in the future as well you will have uh, more work. actually I think all the degree programs have some writing projects uh, in each in each of the degree programs not each class 
Uh, many of you are going to be in English next month, I think. Uh, you're also going to be doing writing projects in there as well. So it's a good way for you guys to start getting used to doing some writing projects. Are there any questions on the 4.1 project? Uh, do you know if game design gets access to Adobe Creative Cloud and programs? I believe that they do. I, I think they do. Don't I'm not certain, but I'm pretty sure that they do. Are there any other questions? When do we get access to Adobe? It depends on what degree programming you're in. I think game design might be like month four. And yes, the fifth video can be about your degree program again. Graphic design, I think, is month four as well. You might want to reach out to your student advisor uh, about when you'll get access to these programs. Uh, I know graphic design does get access to them for sure, so I'm just not exactly sure when. Okay, so it's week one after receiving LaunchBox. You have Discrete Math. Discrete Math is actually kind of fun. It's it's very different from what math what commonly people think math is. Programs that you get for graphic designers, um, I don't know for the I don't know for all of them, but you're gonna get like Photoshop, Illustrator, I think Premiere, After Effects. Uh, it's pretty much I think graphic design gets most of the Adobe suite. I've been through the uh, I've been through the uh, uh, discrete math program here at Full Sail. I actually found it kind of fun. Um, I like math, though. Or I shouldn't say that I necessarily like math, but I'm not bad at it. So I didn't have any issues with it or anything. But it's very different. Uh, discrete math is all logic-based math. It's like, you know, if-then-else statements. Um, they do a chapter on cryptography. I thought that was, that was actually my favorite chapter, the one about cryptography. Uh, Launchbox should be, I think it's the end of this month, William. I know people say English, uh, but I can I can guarantee you English is not that bad. Uh, just make sure that you pay a lot of attention to detail and make sure that you format your citations in APA format. And actually, I'm going to put this in for you guys. Project, I can spell, project APA.info. Uh, I would recommend you bookmark that site that I just uh, shared with you guys. It's all about formatting uh, citations in APA format. Uh, it will help you. Uh, if you if you don't do it for my class, you will definitely do it for English because I think they're going to have you do it too. So, any other questions on the four point one project? Oh, Jennifer's got one. Let me unmute you, Jennifer. Oh, maybe not. But I still might have you on. Yeah, there we go. Okay. All right, any other questions? All right, that's all I've got for you guys this week. Uh, this was kind of a short week. This was our last one as well. So I want to thank all of you for coming out every day or every time that we've had these sessions. You guys have been a great group. Once again, I will hang out for a few more minutes and for any last minute questions. Uh, I wish all of you the best of luck in your future classes. If you feel so inclined, please feel free to reach out to us in your future classes if there is work that you would like to show us. Um, it's something that I always do with my campus students because uh, I see them all the time as they move past my class and I get so I get to see a lot of the work that they do. I don't get to see too much of my online students' work. So if you like, please feel free to reach out to us in the future and just kind of show us the cool stuff that you're working on. Once again, thank you everyone for coming out these four weeks. I'm going to turn off the recording, but like I said, I will hang out for a little while longer for any last-minute questions. And thank you, everyone, for coming through these meetings.